All right. Um, so uh, before we begin, I guess uh, some of you asked for a slightly more challenging data set for coursework two. Um, I put a link on the forum. Uh, this is not, uh, so running on this data set, this wouldn't affect your mark. You're still expected to run things and submit things for the original data set. But if you find that this uh, drastically underestimates your abilities, uh, take a look at the second one. That's a bit, uh, it's a bit more, uh, it, it allows you to test scalability uh, on, 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 on a different scale, in a way. Uh, it's, it's not huge, but it's, uh, it's, it's playable. Um, so uh, if you do it, uh, just make sure, don't submit any top files from the second data set. Uh, and uh, if you want to play on it, just uh, maybe, do, maybe do a scalability graph and then submit it with your assignment or say a couple of things about what you did on that data set in your report. As I said, it won't affect your mark, uh, but it is, uh, it is bragging rights in a way. Um, okay, so um, last time we left off, we were talking about... Uh, Oh, it might be too dark. Yeah. So um, we were talking about query execution methods, uh, and we talked about uh, term at a time and document at a time execution. But all of the examples we had were for relatively simple scoring functions. So we were looking at linear scoring functions, which could be done with either document at a time or term at a time execution. Uh, and what I said is that sometimes you have scoring functions which are not quasi-linear and which you couldn't do with term at a time, but I didn't give you an example. So here is an example. Um, and these, these functions, um, sometimes they're flat functions. You can come up with flat functions that are not quasi-linear. Um, but more often, they arise when you're trying to create a structured uh, scoring function. So a scoring function that looks a little bit like an SQL query, which has some uh, sort of clauses and subclauses where you're trying to look for structured information. So basically, this is a structured expression of information need. And here I have a particularly simple one. So suppose my query is I want to find the word pink ink, uh, uh, sorry, the phrase pink ink, and I want it as a phrase, so I, I want the words to occur next to each other, right? Uh, I also want that to occur within a title field in the document. So I have a structured document. It's not just plain text. I have some structure in it, and I want to find the phrase pink ink in a title. Right? Uh, and also, I want the word wink to occur in that document, but anywhere in the document, not necessarily in the title. Right? So this is an example of a structured request. I want phrase pink ink filtered by title and conjuncted with um, a wink. So typically, a query like that is represented with a structured, uh, in a structured form. So you represent it as a tree, right? As a sequence of nested operators. So that's the tree here, right? This is my pink ink. And the phrase is an operator that means that the two children must be adjacent to each other in terms of positions, right? So ink and pink are children of the phrase operator. And phrase itself is a child of a field operator. And that's the operator that says that my right child must occur within the extent of my left child, right? And my left child here is the title tag. Remember, the way we represent structure in indexing is you invent these non-existent terms Right? And these terms don't have positions, they have spans or extents. And you index them, uh, otherwise you index them just like a normal term. And then during merging, you, uh, you see if the terms or phrases that you want fall within the extent of the, uh, of the field that you want. So that's what's represented by the field operator. Right? And the field itself, it's a child of a Boolean and, and the first child is the field which contains the phrase, and the second child is just the word wink by itself. So that would be a structured, uh, hybrid, a, a tree-like representation of this request. So usually these requests are parsed into a structure like that, which is, in a lot of ways, that's similar to what you do um, when you have nested expressions in, uh, in SQL. Right? <clears throat> so in fact, the two fields are actually quite close in this place. So uh, now, how do, you do a match, how do you do the matching with something like that? 
Uh, and uh, it should be reasonably easy to convince, for you to convince yourself that uh, a scoring function like that, this is not something that you can do with term at a time. Right? So uh, it, would be, it would be exceptionally difficult to do that with term at a time. Uh, you could, but you would actually have to store multiple copies of, um, uh, of, of these score uh, indices that we have in term at a time. Uh, it, it, it would be a nightmare. But with document at a time, this is actually doable. What you need to evaluate a query like that, to execute a query like that, is a slightly different mechanism. So it's not just the vanilla um, document at a time, which was basically a K-way linear merge, if you remember. <clears throat> to do this, uh, you, need, um, you need a special kind of a merge that's basically tied to this tree structure that you've created. So the way it's going to work is basically like that. Uh, every leaf node in that structure corresponds to an inverted list, right? That's, that's one of our indices, so this is our extent indices, and the rest of them are positional indices, so we're storing positions for each term in the document. And by the way, as a reminder, so this is uh, position number eight in document number two, the word ink occurs there, right? Um, so what you do is you still have the pointer sitting on top of each list, uh, but the way these pointers are advanced is a little bit different. What each node of this tree stores is it stores its current position, and it also has um, an, um, sort of, uh, it, it has an iterator, which I'm, I'm just going to call next, uh, as a method in each node. <clears throat> and what this method does is it looks at the, um, it looks at the children, so if this is an intermediate node, like a phrase, it's going to look at the two children. It's going to see if the positions of the two children satisfy the constraint of the node. And if they do, it returns to its parent. And if they don't, it looks at what is the smaller of the two, of the two not necessarily two, you can have many children. What is the smallest child that I have in terms of the document number and position, and call uh, next on that child. And that child may not be the, uh, the leaf node itself, so it may in turn call next on subsequent uh, nodes. So let's see how this works. Um, in the beginning, there is a little bit of a setup, so the pointers are initialized, and these pointers are propagated throughout the tree, right, with a, with a satisfied, non-satisfied uh, result. So uh, title is going to be in document three, position one, ink is in document two, pink is in document four, phrase will store its position as document two, because that's the smaller of the two children, right? And then field is going to store document two, because that's its position. And then wing has document three, field has document two, and then end would have uh, document two as its current um, position. And then what's going to happen is the, the root node is just going to call next on its smaller child, right? So, uh, and calls next on a smaller child. The smaller child is field, right? Um, field is going to look at its two children, so it has title in document three, phrase in document two, so it's going to call phrase. And then phrase is going to look at its two children. And uh, these are leaf nodes, so phrase will check, am I satisfied by the positions of my children, right? And what does phrase mean? Um, phrase looks at the, the two positions that phrase sees are Ink is in document two in position eight. Pink is in document four in position eight. So they're not in the same document. So I don't have a match, right? So uh, what phrase is going to do is it's going to increment. It's going to call next on the smaller child, which is ink, right? So the pointer for uh, ink is the leaf node. So it has nothing to check. You called next on it. It's going to advance the pointer. Now the pointer points to document four and ink returns to its parent. Now phrase, again, looks at the position of, uh, positions of the two children. Ink is in document four, position nine. Pink is in document four, position eight. Uh, they're in the same document, and furthermore, they are adjacent, right? So the phrase pink, ink, is satisfied at this point. So phrase says yay, um, and returns true uh, to the parent, and says yes, I'm satisfied in document four, in, uh, in positions eight through nine. 
So it returns a span. So the next thing that happens is field looks at its two children and it says, okay, I have title, uh, which is in document three, and I have phrase, uh, which is currently in document four. So there is no match because they're not in the same document. So field is going to increment the smaller child. The smaller child is title in this case. That gets advanced to the next one. So it checks, um, okay, now we're in document four. So I have a title in document four, and I also have a phrase match in document four, but they're in their own positions, right? So for the match, uh, the, 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 the phrase match was in positions eight through nine, and the title is in positions one through two. So uh, it's not inside the title. So this is not a match. Uh, this means that uh, field, uh, field would say, okay, I don't have a match, so I'm going to increment my, my smaller child. Uh, it goes there. Uh, now, title is in document nine. Phrase has matched in document four. So there is no match. It's going to call next on phrase. So phrase is no longer matched. It's going to increment its smaller child, four, eight. All right. Then uh, there is no match. Take the smaller child, increment it. You are in the same document. Nice position. So phrase is satisfied. Phrase is going to return a match to its parent field. And now field itself is satisfied because it has a title in document 9, positions 7 through 8, and it has a phrase in document 9, positions 7 through 8. So it's satisfied. Field is going to return to, uh, to its parent, right? And, uh, and its parent and is going to say, okay, my left child is satisfied in document 9, my right child is currently in document three, so I need to advance that. It advances, and let's say it advances to document nine, and now, uh, and matches anywhere in the document, right? It's not tied to position, so now you have a match. The word wink occurs in document nine, and also in document nine, you have pink ink as a phrase in a title. So and is satisfied, and and would return to its parent, whatever its parent is, uh, it would say that I was satisfied in document nine in positions four through eight. And that's actually, uh, so this depends on how you set it up. Uh, Boolean nodes typically don't return a position, but if you had to return a position, you would typically return the entire span. Right? Um, of, um, so starting with the smallest position, which is four, and adding up with a max, which is eight <clears throat> in this case. So uh, that is how you would execute a structured query. So it's basically, it's, it's still linear merge, only the sequence, which lists you're processing at what time, is dictated by the structure uh, of your query. And by the way, uh, you, can, uh, you can do this on really massive scales, because uh, the way, I was sort of assuming that all of this sits in memory, but you don't have to, right? So the, all of these lists can sit on disk, because at each point in time, all I really need is I just need the head of each list. I just need the current node, the current entry in each list. And then when I need to do next, I can throw away the entry that I have and just read off the next one. It's inefficient in terms of I.O., but it's certainly very efficient in terms of memory. So you can do this on truly massive scale and have a really complicated queries uh, run against the data. All right. Um, so uh, that's, it, uh, that's it as far as execution goes. Now let's talk about constructing indices. So this is how do you actually go from documents to building those index structures. 